Good morning from Calgary International Airport. My name is Alex, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is slightly different than usual. Last week, I had the pleasure of being invited by Air Canada on a special flight to check out their end-to-end -end Clean Care Plus program. Now, unless you've literally been living under a rock for the last seven months, COVID-19 is a thing, and it's caused massive disruption throughout the aviation industry. As such, airlines have had to adapt their experience for those that need to or are willing to travel, and one of the ways Air Canada is doing that is with the Clean Care program. To show that off, they organized this event for industry partners, plus me apparently. Either way, this would be a round trip flight to Vancouver on their A220 to demonstrate these changes in person. I was definitely not expecting to be invited to something like this, so I'm really thankful for the opportunity and pretty excited to see what Air Canada has to show us. The day started off at Air Canada's Maple Leaf Lounge in Calgary's domestic terminal, which would be their third lounge to reopen to the public the following day. As the first group of people to use it since March, we got a first-hand glimpse at how they've changed things since the before times. They've reduced the capacity from 250 passengers down to just 50, with the seats all spread out as much as possible. It's quite the change from how it looked when I stopped by in December last year, but it's good to be back. The buffet is no longer a thing, obviously, but you can still order hot food to your table by scanning a QR code and it'll be brought to you. There are also some packaged snacks and drinks available, but you do have to ask for them. At the front, we were also given complimentary Air Canada masks in sealed packages, in addition to a pamphlet outlining the Clean Care Plus program. Parked right in front of the lounge windows was our ride to Vancouver and back today. A six-month-old Airbus A220-300 registered as Charlie Golf Juliet X-Ray Whiskey. Pretty soon, the lounge filled up. Distantly, that is. And we got to hear from a few speakers with some opening remarks before we went to the gate. But we need to get out of our houses. We need to travel. We need to see the world. And so in that, I think we can all be advocates for our industry. We can all continue to be partners. And we can all do our part to make sure that we still have a competitive, vibrant, dynamic travel economy that's here for us as we learn to live with COVID and we find our way forward. And eventually, we stamp this thing out. We're also taking the opportunity at the same time to kind of restart and we jiggle our product as we go through this process because it's our very clear intent to maintain our position as the best airline in North America, especially for our premium customers. The biggest challenge that we're facing is, is breaking down the stigma uh, of, of getting out and enjoying things, meeting face to face, going out and experiencing things. And that's a good example of what Air Canada is doing today. Once you go on your first flight, you're going to feel comfortable going on your next flight. We're looking forward to welcoming you back. But more importantly, what I am looking forward to is seeing you again in my airport in the very near future on board an aircraft and going somewhere with family, friends or business and rediscovering the magic that is aviation. Thank you very much. Our gate for this flight was C-50, which, funny enough, was the same one that we departed from on the A220 inaugural back in January. So, without further ado, let's head to Vancouver. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. For both of these flights, I'm sitting in economy class, where Air Canada has 125 seats in the A220's classic 3-2 configuration. For this flight, I picked seat 25F. The 25F is the standard economy class seat, and for someone who's quite tall like myself, I don't exactly make the legroom look great, but given the circumstances, I really can't complain. I also wanted to get a view behind the wing for once. Having done two other videos on the A220 already, I'll spare you the details of the seat. They are, however, still super wide and look brand new. As we boarded, we were given these lanyards for identification purposes, and they make for a pretty cool souvenir. Once everyone settled in, we were also given out the usual clean care kits, which I'll take a closer look at later on. Okay. 
On behalf of your crew and all Air Canada employees, it is our pleasure to welcome you aboard. We'd like to thank you for your continued support and trust and hope this day showcases our commitment to safety and helps regain your confidence in travel. With that, here's our departure from Calgary, pushing back, de-icing, and taking off from runway 35 right. Personally, I've already flown commercially quite a few times since June, and although it's certainly much different these days, it never gets old. Climbing out of Calgary, there was a fair bit of cloud cover over the eastern slopes of the Rockies, so we didn't see much of the mountains until later on. Reminding Antonio Park's uh, breakfast mailboxes that are available on all of our flights in North America business class. It's a cold breakfast, and on your return flight to Calgary later this afternoon, we'll be providing you with our Jérôme Ferrer uh, meal box that's offered in international economy class. Right away, the fantastic cabin crew on this flight jumped into action with the first meal service. Before that though, let's take a look at the kit that they gave out earlier. In it, there was an extra mask, some sanitary wipes, a bag of pretzels, hand sanitizer, earbuds, a bottle of water, this message from Air Canada's chief medical officer, and a pamphlet on Air Canada's voluntary COVID testing that they're doing for international arrivals in Toronto. For those of you who might not know, at the moment, every passenger arriving from outside of Canada is legally required to undergo a two-week quarantine, and that's been in place this whole time since things escalated back in March. Air Canada has been particularly vocal about that, so they've organized voluntary COVID testing to get more information about the actual number of cases on these inbound flights. Soon enough, the meal boxes and drink service reached my row. This one is the North American business class breakfast, found on flights longer than two hours. It consisted of a cheese plate with Emmental, medium cheddar, brie, crackers, and fruits and vegetables. The main dish was Greek yogurt with fresh berries, melon, coconut, roasted almonds, pumpkin seeds, and granola. Along with that, there was also a croissant and blueberry loaf. In the box, you'll also find even more sanitary wipes, in addition to some surprisingly high-quality plastic cutlery. Overall, this was actually pretty tasty. Obviously, cold meals aren't ideal, but for what it is in these times, it is quite good. That all being said, I'm not totally sure how I feel about eating with the middle seat occupied. In any case, though, I staggered the actual period of taking the mask off to eat with that of my seatmate. So, as long as you're responsible about it and don't use mealtime as a mask off free for all, it's not that much of an issue. There was a second drink service just after the meal boxes were collected, and I went for a sealed bottle of water. Soon enough, though, we began our descent into Vancouver. Please enjoy some of these classic Pacific Northwest views as we arrive on runway 26 right.
1104. Please remain seated with your seats. We wish you a pleasant and safe visit and are looking forward to welcoming you again later today. Thank you. Thank you. Watch your head, hey? I will, thank you. <laughs> I'll save my overall thoughts for the end of the video, but in the meantime, we were ushered over to the Fairmont Vancouver Airport for a couple more presentations. Now, granted I've flown through my fair share of empty airports, but seeing Canada's second busiest airport so quiet is not something I'm used to. Once we walked over, we heard from a few more speakers about their perspective on things. From Air Canada's Director of Government Relations in the West, the Vancouver Airport Authority, the Fairmont Vancouver Airport, and Tourism Vancouver. After that, we headed back downstairs and heard from David Hawksworth, one of Air Canada's chefs, on how the onboard meals have been adjusted. As you saw on the flight over, quite a few changes had to be made, with no more open trays or plates as you'd see in the past. At least for business class and international economy class though, it's nice to see that they still have something. That was followed by a close-up look at the electrostatic sprayers used during grooming, and an explanation of the HEPA filters found on all of their aircraft. This particular one was from the A320 family. Airplanes have always been bad places for viruses to spread. I mean, people, I think, get very nervous. They seem to think that in the old days we would have gotten on board an aircraft and turned to the stranger sitting beside us and then started licking their hands, or something to that effect. Whereas we, most of us will remember you get on an airplane, you sort of say hello to the person beside you, and then you, you get on with your flight in peace. Uh, and part of the reason that virus transmission was so low on airplanes is because you constantly had this filtered air being blown usually from top to bottom. So it's blowing anything you're breathing out down. You have a seat in front of you, which is a natural barrier. It's not a piece of plexiglass. And plus, modern aircraft are swapping out their entire cabin air volume about every two minutes. After that was all said and done, it was an uneventful, socially distanced trip back through security and back to gate 49 where our A220 was waiting. Back on board, I picked 12F for the return leg, which is one of my personal favorites on the A220 for all of that legroom and this spectacular engine view. With boarding completed and the clean care kits handed out again, we were off to Calgary. Here's our departure from Vancouver, taking off from runway 26 left. In the air, the crew sprang into action once again and started the meal service. This time, we got to try one of the International Economy Class meal boxes. With the free middle seat on this leg, I was more than happy to dig right in. This meal consisted of an appetizer of kale and mango salad, a bread roll, a main course of eggplant parmesan, and a brownie for dessert. Again, this was really surprisingly tasty for a cold meal, and I certainly enjoyed it. The bread roll was much softer than it usually is, so that was certainly a plus. One thing I didn't mention on the outbound flight is that the in-flight magazines have also been removed, and there's just an air sickness bag and safety card in all of the seat back pockets. I'll give my final thoughts on today after landing, so here's our descent into Calgary, with some beautiful views of the city as we arrive on runway 17 right.
to Calgary, the local time here now is 5.15. Please remain seated. Thank you again for being part of this day, and we are looking forward to working with you towards a safe and responsible return to travel. Thank you, and have a good night. All in all, this was a fantastic day. It was an honor to be invited on board, and I'm very thankful to Air Canada for the opportunity. So, Air Canada's Clean Care Plus program. Well, the experience is different than usual, but it's not bad by any means. I can definitely appreciate all of the effort that's gone on behind the scenes, as well as in organizing today's event. First and foremost, I'm a big fan of the onboard kits. Strictly speaking, they've got a lot more freebies than you'd normally get on most domestic flights, even before this all started. The meal boxes also are really well thought out, although I wouldn't mind seeing some form of buy on board cold food return for domestic economy flights. Another thing I do have to give kudos to Air Canada for is the fact that they put a noticeable effort into maintaining some sort of onboard product. Around the world, we've seen airlines stopping onboard services entirely as a cost-cutting measure. That's not to name any airline in particular, but it's nice to see Air Canada not going that direction. Although today was a great look at how things have changed, it should be said that all of these procedures and new ways of doing things don't absolve passengers of their responsibility to be safe about travel. You should still wash or sanitize your hands often, keep your distance, and just wear a mask, properly. The takeaway from this, for me at least, is that air travel is indeed safe, as long as you're being responsible about it. Thank you very much for watching this special trip with Air Canada. If you like what you saw in this video, please give it a thumbs up, do consider subscribing if you're new, and until next time, take care.